It is clear that we must find an African solution to our problems and that this can only be found in African unity. Divided, we are weak. United, Africa could become one of the greatest forces for good in the world. Kwame Nkrumah. Back from the historic five-day Addis Ababa African Union and African Diaspora Global Roots Synergy Roundtable Summit that took place from the 23rd to 28th of May 2022, Delegated representatives from civil societies, scholars, governments, African Union, African diaspora, and many more from across the globe. Africa, Australia, Asia, Oceanic, USA, and Canada, the Caribbean, Europe, South, including Brazil, Central America, and the Middle East, gathered together with the vision and goal of stepping up action plan for the historic adoption of the 2012 Declaration of the Global African Diaspora Summit, DGADS. The Roundtable Global Pan-African Summit was to mark the 10th anniversary of the adoption of the African Union African Diaspora Declaration. The theme of the summit Evaluating the success of the Diaspora Declaration and laying out clear, decisive, actionable and attainable path forward to repatriation. The historical feat of the African Union African Diaspora dated back a decade ago, 2012, when the heads of state, governments and representatives of the African Union, AU, the West Indies, Latin America, South America and various representatives from the African Diaspora met during the Global African Diaspora Summit in Santon, Johannesburg, South Africa, and witnessed the historic adoption of the Declaration of the Global African Diaspora Summit, DGADS 2012, which included a commitment to enable the African diaspora to increase their participation in the affairs of the AU as observers and eventually as a sixth region of the African continent, which substantially contributed to the implementation of policies and programs. The choice of 25th of May 2022 for the Roundtable Conference, therefore, is not just a coincidence, but a calculated bid by interested Pan-Africanists to commemorate the historic day and event of May 25th, 2012, which is now globally recognized as Africa Liberation Day. The Addis Ababa African Union African Diaspora Summit therefore marked the 10th year anniversary. Arising from the Global Pan-African Roots Synergy Roundtable, GPARSR, the delegates harped on matters ranging from political, economic, social, geographical and cultural issues as they relate to the well-being of African continent and diaspora, premising it on recognising and acknowledging the support of critical agencies of the body. These include Africa Union Commission and its roles in the implementation for the DGADS 2012, Citizens and Diaspora Directorate, CIDO, which facilitated full participation of African diaspora as key to building Africa. The Economic, Social and Cultural, ECOSOC, acting in an advisory role and connecting African governments to the Union. The African Commission on Human and People's Rights, ACHPR, to protect promote people's rights and interpret the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and so on. Representatives also recalled the urgent need to redefine the decision of the AU Executive Council to adopt the current definition of African diaspora, which does not only mean Africans living outside the continent, but consists of people of African origin who are the historic diaspora the descendants of Africans displaced by transatlantic and Arab slave trades, and further includes all of whom are all living modern migratory Africans, all of whom are living outside the continent, irrespective of their current citizenship and nationality. The reunification of Africans on the continent and those in diaspora by consolidating the links with the diaspora, especially the Africa diaspora organizations in Brazil and the Caribbean, for technical cooperation in culture, economy, politics, and so on, were highly impressed on. The Sixth Region Diaspora Caucus, SRDC, of the Global Pan-African Roots Synergy Roundtable Summit at Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, 
and now captioned the Addis Ababa Declaration 2022, has come and gone. But the sweet memories and hopes of what it stands to gain, which is a united African diaspora front in the interest of the African continent, is an endless possibility. It is noteworthy to mention a few whose immense contributions to the huge success of the summit can never be overemphasized. The delegates, speakers, panelists, representatives and working group moderators, and so on, are all to be appreciated. Professor David Horn's immense contributions to the summit are in no small measure a great factor for the success. Professor David Horn is the president of the 6th Region Diaspora Caucus, SRDC, USA. He made known that the essence of the international conference is to meet and strengthen the ties of how Africa and its diaspora can make the Diaspora Declaration of 2012 work effectively. This, he said, is achievable through the Union's political will with political engagement with government and stakeholders to do what needs to be done. Having Africa diaspora membership in the Pan-Africa Parliament to lobby and legislate favorably for the diasporans. He added that the diaspora is working hard as respected members of African community and respected members of the new coming United African States in economic, social and cultural fronts. He advised the policy makers and heads of state and government to respect and pay attention to African diaspora and supports the intellectuals who talk about Africa today and the future. On the coming international conference in Panama on the 23rd to 28th September 2022, Professor David Horn Caucus Organization International will hold its conference, its annual conference in Panama. Why Panama? Because we intend to bring back the agenda of including African descendants who speak Spanish, African descendants who speak Dutch, African descendants who speak Portuguese. We do not intend for the African diaspora to be short-circuited and to only include African Americans, those from the Caribbean, those from uh, Canada, those from Europe. There are Africans, African descendants, who are 60% of the population in Brazil. There are African descendants who are 50% of the population in Nicaragua. There are as many in Honduras, and there are almost that many in Panama. So part of the, our, our annual conference this year will be held in Panama to remind the African descendants in that part of the world that we are not, you're not being left off, you're not being ignored, you have not been forgotten. You too are part of the African diaspora and group of folk who are making our way to and within the African Union, that we are all part of this great experiment, this great building of a united Africa, that they cannot be left off or ignored. That's why we're having the conference in Panama this year. He concluded that the 6th Region Diaspora Caucus is poised to help build Africa that we deserve and the Africa that would lead the world. He harped on the links that African diaspora all over the world are part of the coalition agenda to work together for a formidable frontier for Africans. Dr. Barriel A. Bickman is a member of the planning committee of the summit and, of course, the African Union and Africa Diaspora Organization. She's the home ambassador. African Diaspora Union in Netherlands. The woman of great substance proved her Shiro prowess by contributing dynamically to every series of the workshop. Priding herself as an African and a diasporan, Dr. Barrel A. Bickman said she got involved in diaspora matters for specific African issues 
which have to do with racism against Africans in Europe and other parts of the globe, which paints a better situation for the diasporans. Now, I was already uh, involved in issues that has to do with specific African Surinamese people. Because if you face racism, what we now call aprophobia, then it is clear that your concentration will be in that part of being a human, a human being. Because every time that where we are confronting racism, it brings you back to the past. And in Suriname, I was already involved in activism, in the struggle to get rid of racism, discrimination, etc., etc. While urging concerned governments and non-governmental organizations to be committed to this unification, she concluded that the African Union and Diaspora Six Region Declaration should be given the desired attention by all stakeholders so as to facilitate the resolutions of the summit. His Royal Majesty King Alfred Dietis Piff must not be left out for his rich African cultural and royal contributions. He drew the attention of the delegates to the fact that not all African countries were affected during the slave trade. He emphasized that only the southern part of Nigeria, down to Cameroon, and few other West Africans were affected in this inhuman trade. While expressing his commitment to the African Union and the African diaspora, he challenged the organization to reach out closely to African state governments and presidents for support. Uh, first and foremost, I must live with all my uh, colleagues and fellow kings and monarchs all over Africa and uh, the sixth region and um, be in a complete network with them. I, we will have to have an embassy of the Union in every um, location. But definitely we will have to start to work with one back home in Nigeria, where I come from. And, um, through the monarchs of their various countries, we would like to um, connect with the governments of that country uh, to give, get their blessing and uh, assurance, assistance, and uh, cooperation. We also would like to set up our own um, traditional rulers council of the diaspora. We will, they have to be the local organizing councils in the various kingdoms or states, uh, countries. And um, we have to make sure that uh, communication is facilitated. Africa must be able, Africa must be able to travel to each other's um, home countries without having to go through Europe. He urged the delegates to visit his country, Nigeria, very soon for such a connection. King Alfred Dietis Piff is the president, Community Center International, Nigeria. He was the first military governor of River State between 1967 and 1975. Even though the African Union, they had their 2063 you know, vision, and there are many people who put in the 2063 may not even live up to 2063. And we don't need to waste so much time while we are waiting for 2063 agenda. But most of the you know, African diasporas and African descendants who believe that it is their right 
to return to Africa, which is their motherland. And uh, most of them who believe that it is their right to be inter reintegrated into Africa. Because there are people who believe that they don't have identity either in the United States or in Europe or in the Caribbean, like the CARICOM. They want to be part of Africa. So the royal kingdoms and the two other mechanisms to ensure that they, you know, there's a return of the Africans in diaspora, the, Af the African descendants. We have um, had members of the diaspora that have repatriated to different countries in Africa um, go through many challenges um, from setting up a business, immigration, um, and looking, and it varies in, in, in different member states, but one thing is common is that repatriating, leaving the West and coming to any African country is filled with challenges. Um, and so based on just trying to help um, and realizing that the support system is not in place in many cases at the member state level, nor at the African Union level. Um, and then knowing that the African Union did ask us to come back home, invite us, encourage us to come back. And so, um, but we are coming back and it's still not prepared for us. I also see that from, from the government level that many invitations are being given to the diaspora in the West, in the Caribbean, um, several trips from different um, governments. Uh, to the Caribbean to invite us to come. Everyone indeed did wonderfully well towards the success of the summit. A grateful motherland of Africa is thankful and proud of you all. In acknowledgement of the adoption of the resolution of the Global African Diaspora Summit 2012, DGADS 2012, we, the Global Pan African Root Synergy Roundtable representatives, have resolved to declare that we accept and will use the original ECOSOC statutes for elections created for the CSOs to apply as contained in Articles 4, 5 and 6 and vehemently urge the ECOSOC General Assembly to publish it if already implemented or to implement the provisions of Article 17 of its statutes to propose and adopt its rules of procedure and modalities for selection of its members and ensure approval of same by the Executive Council of AU, putting into consideration paragraphs 2 and 3 as appropriate. Declare that each subregion of the diaspora will determine its own modality for electing delegates from their subregion. Urge that the African Union General Assembly take the following actions in an expeditious manner. Ensure that the African diaspora is adequately represented in the Bureau's officer assignments. In addition, that the Standing Committee includes members of the African diaspora, as this would include members familiar with cultural nuances of the same. Increase the amount of the African diaspora on the Credentials Committee from one CSO to three CSOs chosen from the three main geographical areas. Direct the Technical Committee of the AU to re-establish communication with the CSOs which have made the submission of their Framework of Engagement document previously to commence its review of their submission and to provide an update to them within the next 30 days of the meeting of the Executive Council in October 2022. Direct CEDO to contact those organizations and inform them of the review that is underway. A lot a reasonable time for the organizations to acknowledge and respond, then announce the date within three months when those organizations shall be notified of the final acceptance of their documents and to prepare for elections. Remind the committees of their responsibility and obligation to enact laws and enforce the application of said laws by the member states as they relate to the Africa diaspora, especially as ratification provides an acceptance and implementation commitment direct the various ministries of all the AU member states to put in place and enact policies. Incentivize investment projects directly for the African diaspora CSOs and organizations. Offer the African diaspora better incentives such as those given to non-African diaspora members. 
work with government agencies such as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Immigration and Home Affairs, as well as registered and relevant Pan-African CSOs to ensure enforcement of said policies as it relates to African diaspora repatriates. (music) 